Wow, family, it has been such an extraordinary worship service. And you go, wow, we still have more. There's still, there's still more to do. And uh, turn our Bibles over, please, to Ephesians chapter 3. We're, we're going to see how much more there is still to do. A passage many of us are familiar with. In Ephesians chapter 3, all the way down in verse 20, the Bible reads, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. And the church says, amen. amen. I mean, how much more is there still to do? Immeasurably more. And our God desires for us to be able to do this for him. But what is it required? It's all that we ask or imagine. Now, I don't know about you, but, but there's a lot that we can imagine. Imagine what God wants to do. Imagine what God wants to do in your families. Imagine what God wants to do in the neighborhoods that you live in. And the Bible says that God is able to do it. You know, it's been so awesome for the church here. And every year we have a different theme. And the theme for this year is the year of blessings. And it's 2020, now it's 2024. When did this happen? 2024. And so we've uh, uh, really entitled the, the year 2024 immeasurably more, amen? And I really believe that that's what God wants to do here in the Orange County region. He wants to do immeasurably more in 2024, and that's the title of the lesson. You know, last year in, in the City of Angels Church, it was so powerful to see God add to our kingdom. Over 500 were baptized into Christ. And I think sometimes we, we, we get this, but perhaps it can go over our heads. We, we want to be a Bible church. And what's so incredible is that when you live out the Bible, you dare we say, see, Bible results. And the Bible says back in Acts chapter 2, verse 47, that as the church began and as the church had devotion, as the church did God's will, God did immeasurably more and they added to their number daily. It's so inspiring to be a part of a church where you're living that out, where every single Day, we see more and more being baptized into Christ, more and more being restored back to the relationship with God, more and more joining God's movement in battle to win the world to do immeasurably more. It was awesome to see the church grow to over a thousand. A goal and a dream. I mean, not only for, for here in Los Angeles, but literally around the world. Yeah that we get to be an example that they don't just say, hey, it'd be cool to have a church of a thousand. Now we have a church of a thousand, and if they did it, then we can do it. And I believe that, that very soon we're going to see literally churches all over the world with thousands upon thousands in them. That the church in Manila will have over a thousand for the Lord. The church in New Delhi will have over a thousand for the Lord the church in Johannesburg, we have over a thousand for the Lord, in Sao Paulo, Brazil, in New York City, in Chicago, everywhere we're going to see because God shows that he wants to do immeasurably more here in the city of angels, that everywhere will be inspired that even more than they could ask or imagine. You know, already we've seen what our God has done. We're now, Lord willing, going to see over nine hundred baptisms this year that's that's the pace could you imagine like that, that that's almost as many as the members in the church 
Now, here's the reality. In many ways, that's how God desires it to be. Because every disciple has the conviction to make a disciple. And that we're now disciples who make disciples who make disciples. And God is literally multiplying his message throughout all the regions through L.A. But I thought about this. What is it going to take for us? Amen. That region or that Bible talk or that group or that church. But what's it going to take for you? What's it going to take for me? What's it going to take for all of us to do immeasurably more in 2024? We'll look over in Luke chapter 10. I think oftentimes we can overcomplicate. And what's so profound is Many say that that Christianity is this very repressive religion. It's full of all these rules. You know, what's so incredible is that when when God put Adam and Eve in the garden to live there, he had all but just one rule. Don't eat from that tree. Everything else, they could do whatever they wanted. He even got to name the animals. Isn't that cool? Like, they brought the first one, and he he goes, all right, Adam, what, what do you want to name that one? He goes, Dog. It's like, all right, just my name's spelled backwards, but okay, let's let's get a little more creative here. And he's like hippopotamus. Like he got to name them whatever he wanted. There's just one rule. God wasn't restrictive. When God's people were to be set free, and Moses went up to the mountain to, to get the rules, how many were there? Just ten. And even Jesus Christ. When he comes to fulfill the law, we're going to see here what was the rules that he gave so that we could do immeasurably more. Rather than be restricted, what we can't do, God is trying to say, this is what I want you to do because you can do. Amen. Luke chapter 10, down in verse 25. It says, on one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Now, now here's the thing, guys. If you see a movie, and at the beginning of the movie, the opening kind of little credit is on one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus, dot, dot, dot. You know it's going to be a good movie. You go, oh, that, you, you don't do that. That's a bad idea. And you go, how could somebody, they have the law, they're an expert in the Bible. They've been going to church their whole life. They, they understand they need to go on Sundays and midweeks. How could they ever put Jesus to the test? And then much like we just thought about in the communion, you go, wow, that's us. We put Jesus to the test. And so maybe this morning, that, that's where you've been at. You've been putting Jesus to the test right here. But Jesus, rather than just destroying you or or casting you aside, wants to help you have more clarity so you can live out what his will is for you. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law? He replied, how do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly. Ding, 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 Jesus replied. Do this, and you will live. We stop right here. You know, we find that that all that Jesus encompassed wasn't just to to bring the sacrifices and to go to Jerusalem three times a year. And he said, if you can just but understand these two commands, everything else will fall into place. And so if we want to do immeasurably more in 2024, which I believe we do, then first we must have immeasurably more love. You see, the the key for us as as disciples, as true Christians, is not to get just caught up in all the rigmarole of life and we need more square footage and we need more cars and we need more shoes or more shirts or more. We need all these things that that we can feel like life and then the American dream is going to give us. What we need is more love. 
What the world lacks today is love. And sadly, at times, if we're not careful, it's not just a lack thereof in the world. It can even be in God's church. And that it rests upon the shoulders. It rests upon the lives. It rests upon the hearts of you and me to be those men and women who want to do more, who want to love immeasurably more. He says, well, what, well how do you love? Well, what do you need to do? You need to love the Lord your God with all your heart. The Greek word for heart is cardia. It's where we actually get cardio, right? Some of us maybe, I don't know, we need more cardio too. It's really, it was really uh, convicting here. Uh, you know, our, our dear sister, uh, Edie Grizzle. Yeah. Yesterday, she, she worked on her cardio. She ran over 10 miles. Like, like she wanted to. She wasn't being chased by something. She just decided, I'm going to work on my cardio. You know, to really work on your cardio is be willing to go the distance. And the same in our hearts. If we want to grow in our love with God, it's not just to do the stagnant routine of where we are. It's being willing to go the distance, to go even further. In fact, her own feet started to bleed from it. And that when you love something with all of your heart, heart. You're willing to bleed. You're willing to suffer. You're willing to go through it. You see, it doesn't just encompass the center of the physical, but of the spiritual. Your passions, your desires, your affections, your endeavors. Let us make that decision this morning that as we go into the week, as we go into Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and all the way to next Sunday, we're going to love God with all of our heart, our passions, our desires, our affections, and our endeavors. All of our soul. The word is psyche. It's almost synonymous with the heart but it encompasses that which you cannot understand. It's, dare we say, transcendent. And I really believe that th this is what separates us to be who God made us to be as humans, yeah. is to have the soul, to have the capacity to love with all of our soul. It's deeper than just the heart. You know, if, if you were to see a, a family of, of ducks with the little ducklings, and you run up to, to go see the little ducklings, believe it or not, the mother duck does not come and attack you and try and protect. She's like, I'm out. There's a self-preservation. And yet when we love something with not just all of our heart, but all of our soul, the transcendency of it is no longer is it about yourself, but now it's a self-sacrificing love. And yes, we can have it with the endeavors and the passions, and I love this, but true love has no greater friend than this, that they lay down their life. And that much like Jesus Christ didn't just love us to come and spend time with us, he loved us enough at the psyche to lay down his life, to protect us, to get in the way of, and to prevent so that we could be with him. We've got to ask ourselves, even this morning, not in the negative way, but in the real way, to say, has my heart, has my love, has my soul continued to be that like Jesus? Yeah. To lay down my life at the altar of God. To lay down my future. To lay down all that I desire to say, God, I trust you. In the path of persecution. In the path of hardship. and the path of disruptions. I know that you're going to take care of me. I lay it down. I love you with all of my soul. Strength. The word for strength is ixti. It's the ability, force, or might. You know, I think for many of us, we, when, we, when we're going through hard times or, or we're sick, we pull back, right? You, if you're sick, you don't go to your job. You go, hey, I, I, I've done a lot. I've been working all year, and I've saved up a lot of this equity that we like to call vacation. And so I'm going to now take a one-week vacation from my job. I mean, I've, I've kind of earned the right. But if we're not careful, this vacation mentality starts to creep into our convictions. Uh -oh. yeah, 
hey, I went to church like all year. Like I even sang some of the songs. It's, you know, you're welcome. So therefore, I've now built up a spiritual equity and and I'm going to take a vacation from God. Not a long one. Like, come on. Not a long one. But, But I need a little break from God. And it says, no, no, that's not loving God with all of your strength. That what we understand and, and we've kind of been uh, uh, conditioned to believe is that love is an emotion. And although love does carry emotion with it, right. true, true love is not an emotion. True love is a decision. On, bro. Yep. That even when we, quote, unquote, don't feel like it, we still do it because we love it. And that in that same way, it was so special for, for the married couples to get together that, that day after day, we make that decision to love our spouse. And, and last night, the Charmellas really helped us to understand that we're both lovers and friends in our marriages. That our first marriage that we ever had in our life was to be to Christ, was to be with Jesus Christ when we were baptized and became one with our Lord. And so we've got to make that decision day after day, that even when we quote-unquote don't feel like it because we love with all of our strength, it's not just an emotional decision. It's not just an emotion. It's that decision that we make. You with me at church? Lastly is mind. It's dianoia. It's the faculty of understanding, learning, and comprehension. I believe that, that in many ways this is what gets you to that next level of all the other types of love because the more that you understand the more it can actually help and compel you i think for many of us we we memorize uh recipes we we memorize sports stats teams directions our kids schedules and yet if we're not careful we 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 don't really memorize god's word And what's so incredible is that you can every single day invest in something that's not just going to change your life, but immeasurably more change the lives of those around us. It's so inspiring. You know, it's very simple. If we just read four chapters every day, it's not a crazy amount, but just four chapters of the Bible every day, take you 15, 20, maybe 30 minutes just to read it. We spend maybe more time on social media on Netflix, on Hulu, on Spotify. I mean, we could put hours. I mean, the phone will actually tell you how many hours you've done of each of these things. And it'll commend you. It commends you. It's like good news. Your screen time is down 15%. You've only spent seven and a half hours on your phone this week. You go, wow. How much more so if we open up the Bible, those 30, 40 minutes every day, you can read the entire Bible in one year. And imagine in this room, if we have a group of men and women that every year we read the Bible and year after year, rather than having trillions of hours of watching Barbie movie or Oppenheimer or The Office or whatever you watch, we could have trillions of hours of loving God with all of our mind, with all of that dianoia to raise up in a great way to know the knowledge of our God. Amen. Amen. You know, I, wanna, I want us to, to take this next week and, and really think about in what capacity have you maybe started to pull back? Maybe you really have. You like, I love reading my Bible, but I just don't really like to pray. Well, then whatever we become weak in, let's make it our strength. Because, well, I really love reading my Bible, but I just don't really like to share my faith. Well, the, whatever the weaknesses are in loving God with all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your soul, and all of your strength, let's devote ourselves to it. Let's do immeasurably more, and let's watch our God work powerfully. Amen? The second, love your neighbor as who? As yourself. I think it's safe to say we, we all tend to really love ourselves. I mean, very seldom do we go, you know what? Not today, Tyler. You, you have not been very good. You do not get to eat food. Nope, I'm going to keep you up. You do not get to sleep. 
I know, I know you really wanted to buy those shoes, but you are not gonna, I, I, you even buy the shoes. You buy the shirt, you buy, you know, you know what? I deserve that boba, I deserve that coffee. I deserve, you know, treat yourself. And amen, you know, amen. No, no, no one's gonna like hunt you down for the boba or for whatever you, but, but here's the reality is now go, do you love your neighbor? As you love yourself. Imagine the world, what it would look like if every human being would but just embrace this concept that they're going to love their neighbor as they love themselves. Completely different world. And sadly, we, we live in a time and in a world and a religiosity that isn't about loving our neighbor as ourself, but it's all about self-care and self-preservation. You know, it goes on to read here in verse 29. Well, let's go back to verse 28. It says, you have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself. So he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, When he was attacked by robbers, they stripped him of his clothes, beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road. And we saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him pass by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was. And when he saw him, took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said. And when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. You know, not only for us do we need to make sure that we love our neighbor as ourselves, we now find the, the very embodiment of doing that. And so if we're going to have immeasurably more love, and we love God, we love with all of our heart, with all of our mind, all of our soul, all of our strength, and we're going to love our neighbor as ourself, then simply put, we'll also have immeasurably more impact. Come on, bro. And that's our second and final point. Isn't that what we all want to have in our life? Yeah. It's a life filled with impact. Come on, bro. We want to look back in our week and go, did my, did my week really have something to do? I mean, did I really grow? Did my bank account grow? Did my character grow? Did my life grow? Did I just just waste time? We don't want to waste time. We want to make the most of every opportunity. We got to have immeasurably more impact. The Bible says that that in this story, that this, this individual was going from Jerusalem to Jericho. Now, Jesus' image, imagery is always specific. He didn't just invent a story because he was bored. But every detail was to have an impact to really illustrate, not only for those watching then at that time, but for us this morning. You see, oftentimes, never would people go from Jerusalem to Jericho. It was always the opposite. Right. Jerusalem sat at a higher uh, a sea level, above sea level, Whereas Jericho was below sea level. And so on an imagery standard, he's saying, hey, this individual was once with the city of God, with the people of God, but now was going down, was descending rather than taking it higher. We also understand that that in Jerusalem, I mean, well, the Middle East, a lot of times we we think is a desert, but Jerusalem was very lush. It had a lot of rain that would come and nourish it. But by the time you reached Jericho, it was desert once more. That Jerusalem would have had trees and shrubbery, but as you went, there would have been going less and less greenery. What is it trying to say? It's saying that he's going the wrong way. Jerusalem would have represented God. And the farther you travel from God, the less life you start to see. You know, and it's really trying to illustrate that he's going the wrong way. It's like one night, a guy walks down alone in a dark alley. You go, something bad's going to happen right here. 
and he had turned away. It's so awesome when, when we can see those that they were once going the wrong way right there, but now turn back to go to Jerusalem to God's people. It was so awesome to see Gloria be restored today. And then she described that. She said, my, my life was, was going the wrong way. My life was, was getting darker. My life was getting more and more challenging. But she made that decision to turn back. And I appreciate the caution that she gave to all of us. She goes, if that's where you're going, turn around. If that's the direction that you're taking right now, get back up. Take it higher like never before. It says that as he travels, he's attacked. He's stripped of his clothes. He's left naked, beaten, and left for dead. What, what's the point there? That when you walk away from God, you'll end up the same way. You know, a priest walks by, and he doesn't stop. Well, well, well who is the priest? It was the one that ministered before the Lord for God's people. You know, as, as was described, we can have a form of godliness but deny its power. We are to be a royal priesthood in our lives as we go in our Bible talks and in our ministries. Amen? Amen. The Levite were, were those that were to serve and help to get people, God's people to be close to him as well. It would be like being the, the, in the ushering or doing song leading or, or kids kingdom. A lot of times, if we're not careful, we start to find our titles and our roles and our positions in God's kingdom. It replaces our relationship with God. And rather than just saying, I'm a humble servant who's willing to do whatever, instead, we now find our comfort and security in our title. It says the Samaritan walks by and helps him out. Why, why is the Samaritan such a, a big deal? Why is it so significant? Well, the history of the Samaritans, are, I, I know you guys already know this. Amen. But in a nutshell, as, as God's people grew more and more distant from him, all the way back from the time of King David that the kingdom itself then splits into two. And there was a group within God's people that tried to stay a little bit more serious and those that slowly drifted and assimilated into the culture of the world. That now became what we know as the Samaritans. And so the Samaritans were these individuals that they, they had a, an idea of the law, but they created their own theology. In fact, rather than having Jerusalem being the place to worship, they found and created their own temple to worship. Later on, over time, as other nations came and invaded, they destroyed that temple. And so the Samaritans, who, who so admired what they had, looked down at Jerusalem. They looked down at these people, and they said, let's go and try and ruin their temple there in Jerusalem. Right. And so at one point in time, these Samaritans, who were oppressive towards the Jewish nation in that way, in fact, took bones which were considered unclean, they went into the very temple and they threw the bones everywhere, desecrating it. It would have been like going and trying to burn down the White House on the 4th of July. And so because of that, there was a deep hatred. This is, these people are not our people. Yeah, they, they have this. Yeah, they have the law. But they don't do it. They're different than us and they hated them all the more. And so this man, the expert in the law, was trying to say, hey, even people like that, should we still love them? You know, I think in our own hearts at times, we've got to ask ourselves, do we love not only those that love us, but those that we feel are quote-unquote oppressive, those that we feel like have, have no longer loved back in that same way? Because it's easy to love those that love you. But that's not what real love is. Real love is willing to love in spite of it. Real love is to forgive even when you're not forgiven by them. Real love is to pour yourself out without any expectation in return. And that's the love that we're called to have to have true impact. You know, it says that this man, the Samaritan, takes oil and wine. And what is the oil to represent? It's to represent the anointing of God, the spirit of God. That the way that we're going to heal others in our life is not healing them by our own intellect or ability. It's by God's spirit working in our life. It's by keeping in step with to see those that we can have an impact with. 
The wine was to represent, yes, the blood of Christ. This is that you're not going to be able to. But by pouring out God's forgiveness in their lives through that same wine, they can be healed as well. And their own animal, to put them on there, is to be willing to go that extra mile. And then it says that he doesn't just do it once. He says, I'll come back again, again, and again, and pay whatever price is necessary. You see, for us, we've got to understand the vision that God wants us to have to change this world, it's going to take again and again and again and again. You know, it's going to be such an incredible time that one day we're going to get together for a conference somewhere that's going to hold thousands upon thousands. We're all going to be much older than we are right right now. And all of a sudden, at the very end, we're going to have one final song. And we're going to ask our dear brother, Lou Jack. Lou Jack Martinez is going to come up. Maybe he's going to have like like a little walker right there. He's going to be, you know, to take a little time. He's going to be up there. And we're going to sing one more song, what we know is to be the glory song. And he's going to walk through all the places that God has gotten us to, all the lives that were lost on the way, all the sacrifice. And as around the throne, we're going to sing and say, the world was evangelized in our day because of the impact. But what's the impact going to take? Perpetual sacrifice. You know, as we come into even special missions, it's going to take giving of our finances again and again. And again, I think for many of us, if we're not careful, we, we, we miss the impact that our sacrifice can have. On, that here, Lord willing, in the year of blessings, we're going to see another 24 churches be sent out. And the churches being sent out is not just of like, you know, people go for a couple days or just to go see an area. They're literally uprooting everything they have to do this. You know, we got to believe not only in the worldwide vision, but the local vision. We've got to now start to think of where do we need more sectors in Orange County? Where do we need new Bible talks? And we've got to be willing to not only just give, like, hey, you you can have the finances, but what about the time? Give of our lives. Give of our energy. Give of our focus. And this, in turn, is what's going to give an eternal impact to all those along the way as we take our way up to the Jerusalem. You know, already this year, Orange County has seen 14 baptized into Christ. We now are at 149 disciples. Today, we have three more who have come to be baptized. We saw Chantel place membership and glory be restored. We're over 150 for the Lord again here. And we know that this is what God wants to see happen. Even now, we, we love to give our dear brother Chidi a hard time. Because with Chidi, we, we, we can't fit in this room anymore we got to find somewhere else. The impact is growing too much. And we've got to pray that we're going to bust out of this room, that no longer we're just at the back of the bay, but that everywhere we go, that in the Jedi sector, you can no longer fit in the back bay. That in the Irvine sector, we no longer fit in back bay. That in the Fullerton sector, that there's just nowhere to fit because God's kingdom is having that true impact. You know, for us today, let's let's make that decision that our God who wants to do immeasurably more is going to do it through you, is going to do it through me, is going to do it through all of us. But it starts with not just immeasurably more in these ways, but immeasurably more in our love. To make that decision today, to love God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And that secondly for us, that we love our neighbor as ourself so that we can have immeasurably more impact that this is not just the start or this is not the end but the beginning and the start of what our God is going to do that as we see again three more souls and become to be baptized in God's kingdom let us make that decision that it's going to be immeasurably more in 2024 and to God be the glory thank you so much